Hello! It's been a long time since I've made a video here. I have just finished teaching a class on children's literature at the University of Minnesota and it made me remember how much I love gathering together books along a theme or books along a topic. My family is going to be moving soon so I had put together a whole pile of books about moving for my daughter who's nearing two years old and I thought I would share some of these with you honorable mentions that are good books but that I won't talk about in detail. One is Finding a Home. It is a very beautiful story of a rabbit finding their way to a new home with the help of their friends. It's full of sadness and love. Lenny and Lucy is one of several books where the way the child copes with the move is through some sort of imaginary helper. It's by Philip and Aaron's dead, who you might know from A Sick Day for Amos McGee. The Snow Lion is also another book along these lines, and Paper Airplanes are by the same author-illustrator. The Snow Lion is an imaginary creature that this child dreams up while she's going through the trouble of moving, um, and Paper Planes is about a friendship and the friendship lasting over a move. Mabel and Sam at Home is very imaginative and delightful, a way of sort of coping, reimagining what all the boxes could be, and reimagining the new place as a museum. A New Home is a beautiful book. A little girl who lives in Mexico City and a little boy who lives in New York City whose families are each moving to the other cities. A lot of working through the, the emotions of an international move. Ten Beautiful Things is the story of the car ride to the new home. A little girl is moving in with her grandmother. They are looking for ten beautiful things along the way. It's tender and unsurprisingly very beautiful things that go away. It's not about moving in particular, but the thing I wanted to show about it is the translucent overlays. So a lot of the illustrations will mean one thing and then mean a different thing with the illustration changes. Four I wanted to specifically highlight are ones that we've read a lot with my daughter that she's continued to ask for. This one is not about moving in particular, but it's called Home Is. It's a very recent book. It is a series of rhymes Things like home is woven, home is dug, home is roomy, home is snug. And a lot of opposites. Home is journey, home is here, home is far, home is near. And I find it really tender. And it's what home can be, uh, both descriptions and depictions of how home can feel or how it can be characterized. So I love that one. Bad by Goodbye is a book that is very simple and also like home is has uh, not a lot of text on each page. Um, four words usually. The thing that I think really stands out in this one is the illustrations and how much they show the motion of moving and the emotions of moving. Even the uh, the cover page starts with our main little boy grimacing in anger and sadness and as you pull around you see wailing and crying and then looking backwards sadly. And then when you get to the front cover, in the first image, he's looking quite sad. And the center of the cover, he's quite sort of neutral, or maybe a, a little bit of a smile. And then the, the rest of the cover, he's looking forward sort of eager. And by the inside of the cover, he's happy. So a lot of the book is moving from bad by to good by, starting with bad day, bad box, bad mop, bad blocks. Everyone's crying. The time when they get into the car and they're moving along and it starts to get a little bit more neutral and a little bit more descriptive. Gray clouds, gold wheat, things he's noticing along the way. The blue pool and the loud ice in their motel. By the end there's a lot of positive things he's seeing in the new place which makes it sort of uplifting, but I think the thing that really does it for me is these illustrations. Do you see these movers going in and out of this truck? And they're sort of transparent. You see the sort of the steady thing of the house and even the steady of the moving van, but the people going in and out and in and out and the like motion of moving, it's really beautifully portrayed. By the time you get to the end, it's good friend goodbye. Yard Sale is a super tender book. Main character's family is moving from their house to a small apartment. It's clear that there are like financial troubles that are causing this move. The emotions of all of their belongings sort of being 
divvied out to strangers, including her bike. Throughout the book, there's a lot of questions about what is and is not for sale and what does it mean to have money troubles, both sort of hinting at that and also showing the not understanding that children are doing. And the real clincher in this book is a moment at the end of the yard sale when mostly everything is sold and they're all feeling droopy when an older woman says, well, aren't you the cutest thing? Are you for sale? And she gets terrified that her family, her parents wouldn't sell her, would they? The answer is no. Not for a million trillion dollars. Not ever, ever, ever. There's a sweetness to the story that I think is both not shying away from how it's hard, but also reaffirming the love. And the last but not least, bitter and sweet which is this beautiful story. Again, with really lovely illustrations, but the sort of mixed media that's going on here. This is a story of a girl whose grandmother says when she calls to tell her that they're moving, that, that when you make a move, there's some bitter, but even more sweet. And so she goes through all the, like, the yard sale and the saying goodbye to her classmates, seeing the, the city she grew up in go in the back window, and she's like, Grandma must be wrong, there's only bitter! And sort of through this sort of beautiful little piece with a neighbor girl who brings her cocoa powder for hot chocolate, which is unsweetened, and so she tries to make the cocoa without adding sugar, and it's bitter, just like everything else! When her friend is saying, I, I forgot to tell you, you needed to add sugar to it. The, the, final, the final piece of it is she calls her grandmother back, like, um, I thought it was only bitter here, Hannah says. Did you find the sweet? Her grandmother asked. Oh, Grandma, Hannah said. You can't just find it. You have to add it yourself. Makes me and my husband cry basically every time. So that's bitter and sweet. Hope you enjoyed these list of books on moving.